Me and the one. <laughs> so come at you with another video. That's a column, whatever you want to call it. So it's come to my attention there's a Superman show in the Villa on the CW. This is kind of good news because I've been wanting a Superman show of some kind for a while now. I don't know if Small really counts because he was never really Superman, just Clark Kent running around without anyone knowing what he was doing somehow without glasses. So Game of Thrones dudes have left their planned Disney Wars project, which apparently was, was going to be about the origins of the Jedi. Uh, I can go into a whole thing on that, but long, sh short version of it is <laughs> it would have been crap. I would have just been Game of Thrones in space. I guarantee they would have started hiring people from the show to be in their Star Wars, pro Disney Wars project. Probably would have been crap. And everybody knows how many people haters there are out there. So, what's the point of doing more origin stories or prequels? If the first set of prequels that uh, George Lucas himself did were never received that well. Unless you grew up in that era. Like myself. I was, what, 13 when The Phantom Menace came out? The first Star Wars film I ever saw in theaters, Phantom Menace. But that was great. Love the pod race. Darth Maul fight, eh. Too short. <laughs> I never understood why people go all that crazy about that one. I thought that fight was okay when it first started. It was pretty cool. But it's not the first time I've seen Double Bladed Saber. The first time I saw Double Bladed Saber was Old Republic games. Back in the day. And then to Old Republic. And then KOTOR 2. Yeah, so those games came out even before the prequels. Those are like, what, 2002, 2004? Revenge of the Sith was in 2005, so... I'm like, oh, it was the first time I've seen Double Blade Like, no, it's not. Maybe on film. But not in the Star Wars universe. Because at that point, the expanded universe has already been doing its thing. With the books and games, comics, you name it. <laughs> so, the Game of Thrones guys leaving is good. Because, in my opinion, I don't think Star Wars belongs on, well, I'm not going to get to that later, but this is good news because I don't think two different franchises should be mixing up anyway. Game of Thrones should be Game of Thrones, and Star Wars should be Star Wars. Except Star Wars isn't Star Wars anymore, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Well, the Game of Thrones guys should just stay away. Sam and Kevin Feige are just going to make it Marvel in space. Stay away. <laughs> stay away. Well, you did a good job with the Marvel Universe films. Endgame was good for a finale. Kind of. But stop while you're ahead, dude. Stop while you're still on fire for the most part. Don't keep rubbing yourself in the oil, because then eventually you're going to mess up. And if we learn anything from Jar Jar Abrams is that just because you're a fan doesn't mean you're going to be making good films. Because the Jar Jar Abrams Disney Wars films have been terrible. Force Awakens, Reboot Awakens, okay. And this new one, Rise of Skywalker, even though there's no Skywalkers left. It's going to be crap. I mean, do you have any idea how many leaks have been found online? <laughs> and it's making me laugh just thinking about it, it's just because it's Star Jar Abrams, man. This is what he does. Copies and pastes. <laughs> and I just talked about this before. There's a shot in the trailer of a Star Destroyer coming out of the water. Star Destroyers don't go underwater. The U.S. Enterprise doesn't go underwater. The starships, not submarines. I mean, this guy doesn't understand any of these, either of these universes. <laughs> and 
and uh, The Mandalorian, new TV series on Disney Wars, Disney Plus. Does Star Wars really belong on television? Live action, I mean. The cartoons are great. The Clone Wars series is fantastic. I don't know about the other one, Rebels or whatever it's called. That was boring. The short answer is no. It doesn't. <laughs> Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, those are cinematic properties. The show of George Lucas was inspired by old school Bug Rogers show. Fine, okay. But as the films stand on their own, we go from film to TV, it's a completely different atmosphere. And which, which means the budget will be cut in half. Therefore, it's in everyone's best interest to avoid. <laughs> well, this was my problem with that Lord of the Rings TV show being announced because you can't go from freaking Return of the King type of cinematic property to freaking Amazon budget because they're going to go bankrupt just shooting a couple of scenes. At least with the films, they shot almost all of it in freaking New Zealand. Hugh Jackson was like, just point the camera that way and go from there. Can't do that on TV, man. I mean, at least with the games, you can explore different things like Italian and the elf chick. You can explore different things. You can reach a different audience. Lord of the Rings is over. I mean, the Hobbit films, for the most part, were kind of bad, especially the last one. But there's no reason for the Lord of the Rings or Star Wars to be on television. Not live action, I mean. Harry Potter is done. It's another discussion because Harry Potter is kind of smaller on scale. You can make an argument for that, I suppose, but you can probably do a lot more Harry Potter on TV than you can on film. Especially with the new ones. There's J.K. Rowling working on a script right now meaning the film will probably be released in 2021, maybe. It's like a three-year gap. I hope these all get to be released in theaters at, within a reasonable amount of time. The rumors I've heard about Johnny Depp ain't looking so good for him, but fingers crossed. I haven't really heard anything about the Superman series. But, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of excited. I'm a little nervous. I think they should recast the guy. Though he was pretty good the first time he showed up in Supergirl. But, I mean, honestly, if Superman exists, you don't need Supergirl. Seriously. They have the same powers. She's just as powerful as him, if not more. <laughs> now, if she exists, she only him. So, it's like, well, I mean, he should be more powerful, but technically, she could be more powerful, depending on what version we're talking about here. But, I just don't think Star Wars belongs on TV, live action form. I mean, uh, the Kenobi series has apparently been greenlit, as well as some guy from Rogue Zero, Caspian or something. <laughs> Caspian and Andor, I think, from Rogue Zero, the Spanish dude. I, hope, I wish there were subtitles in the film because I couldn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> Man, what is he saying? Can get a translator up in here? And the Mandalorians, it looks so boring, man. I mean, the Mandalorians were great in the Old Republic when they were in the masses. When it was the Mandalorian Wars and you had Mandalore and Candorous from the Old Republic games. That was when the Mandalorians were great. Just this, this crappy-ass Disney era 
and has basically shrunk the entire galaxy into a little friggin' neighborhood. What to do? Solo prequel no one wants. A prequel about basically ripping out dark forces with Frog Zero. Uh, Reboot Awakens, basically telling the same damn story everyone's seen a thousand times. Last Jedi I sucked ass. And Rise of Skywalker is gonna be a piece of crap. And I made a video explaining why everyone needs to boycott that. So check it out, it should be on the page somewhere. It's like the only Star Wars material I'm excited for is Jedi Fallen Order. New video game. It's being released within the next few weeks on the 15th. You gotta retake a test and uh, comes out that night actually. So it'll be downloaded on my PlayStation. Looking forward to that. Might have to disappear from my job. <laughs> oh, I'm calling in sick today. My bad. So yeah, this is good news that they gave it to only guys are leaving. I think they're really leaving because they don't want to get into backlash if they screw up. Considering how much backlash they got from season 8 of Game of Thrones, I can't blame them. Then again, as long as, even if they did a good job with whatever they were going to do, as long as crazy Kathleen Crick Kennedy is, the, is in charge under her banner, she gets the final say, no matter what. Even if he was going to do Old Republic or Revan and Bastila, she gets the final say. That's how much pull she has. And she hasn't, she hasn't earned any of that, in my opinion. I mean, on her watch, she gave Rowan Johnson, Roundhead Johnson, all the creativity, quote-unquote creativity, and the freedom that he had to destroy Luke Skywalker's character and Star Wars Universe all in one film. And she's gonna do the same thing with this. If not this, then definitely with Kenobi. Because you know Regular Returning is great. It's great news. I really enjoy his performance in the prequels. But again, man, without George Lucas, I don't think they're gonna have a great vision for any of these series that they're making. It's like, even with the prequels when George Lucas was in charge even when he was directing the prequels at least he knew what he was doing you look at all these Disney Wars films they are pieces of crap <laughs> like it is quite clear they have no idea what they're doing the fact that they keep hiring the same idiots like George R. Abrams again as if he's going to do anything new because he won't Bringing Palpatine back is proof of this. He's not going to do anything new. I mean, the start of the Star Destroyer is identical to the U.S. Enterprise in, what was it, the third Star Trek film that he made? I like Into Darkness, but I see why Trekkies don't. But it's like, the U.S. Enterprise doesn't go underwater. Neither the Star Destroyers. They're not submarines. They're starships. It's like, this makes no sense. I mean, it's just a little shot in the trailer, but it's enough to prove that J.J. Abrams is not the guy you want to hire for Star Wars. He's just not. I mean, such a fan. I like, didn't even have the freaking big three get together in the film. I was, what kind of fan is he then? <laughs> didn't give Chewbacca or Leia a moment after Han was killed. I mean, he had some original ideas, but it's like, I think he just stuck and done all three films. I don't think we'd have this problem. But again, given the status of the Star Wars quote unquote fandom, whoever's has left, I jumped ship a while ago. Given the status of the Star Wars fandom, <laughs> it's safe to say that uh, I think Avon should jump ship. I'm honestly surprised he came back at all. Because all this talk about calling people that you don't like women or something if you don't like the last film. You know, 
flash him suck balls. Then he's wondering why people don't give a damn about his new film. Why it's got so many down votes on YouTube and <laughs> gosh, I wonder why Abrams could be sucking his head. Dope. <laughs> people gotta watch what they say, man. People don't forget anything. On the internet? You say one thing, you sneeze the wrong way. If you sneeze the wrong way on the internet, someone's going to find out. I mean, there is, there's also a dark side to this news as well. Is they were going to give that moron, Ruin Johnson, a trilogy, despite splitting the fan base. I wouldn't say splitting, I think most people hate the film, because most people, are, I hope, I would think are smart. <laughs> those that like it, I have no, no words for those people, none. It's like, either you don't understand Star Wars at all, or you're just kissing up to the mouse because you signed your paycheck, or whatever. Because <laughs> I just... I can't understand how people would defend that film. It's not even a film. There's no story. There's no characters that are interesting. Luke Skywalker is completely out of character. Ray has no character. <laughs> she just does stuff. And people excuse her because she's a chick. I liked Finn. I thought they were going to go somewhere with the guy, but turns out, not so much. And Poe has no character either. It's like... Completely disjointed, and uh, I think people are starting to wake up to uh, Disney's obvious failure with this franchise. It spent four billion dollars, four billion, and uh, I think the only film that people actually like, I don't, but uh, Rogue Zero is the only fan film people seem to rally towards. <laughs> I don't. I, I didn't like it at all. That was boring. I fell asleep at least three times. It was like the Mandalorian. It's just another guy with a blaster. It just looks really boring. It looks under budget and just looks like crap in my opinion. No offense to John Favreau, but obviously they, obviously they had a limited budget for this because in my opinion it looks terrible. <laughs> I'm not saying I won't check it out, but not anytime soon. I'll probably just wait till the whole season is done and then sign up temporarily, watch it the first season and review it, and then unsubscribe. Why would you do that, Pete? Well, to avoid waiting week to week. Because for whatever reason, they want people to wait week to week instead of just binge watching all at once. Someone's going to find. Someone's going to find a way to bootleg it or something. They're trying to get people with Netflix. Netflix, you can just binge watch everything all at once. It's not week to week. <laughs> you know how stupid that would be? Especially in the comfort of my own damn house. I want a week, a week to watch another episode when it's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> so this is another show I've been watching, uh, Treadstone, based on the uh, organization and the born Identity series. So that's pretty good. I saw the first three episodes. I'm like, yeah, this is all right. The guy that made Heroes, Tim Crane, is involved. So I'm like, all right. It's, I need a little more story than action right now. It's, it seems like there's a lot of random ass fight sequences. I need more story because there's a lot going on. And I just, it's really difficult to follow. So hopefully they can get more organized with that. The one thing I focus on in most of my stories is structure. I need everything to flow naturally in my stories. Otherwise, I just go draft after draft. Now, at least with George Lucas, he had structure. He knew what he was doing. It might not have been to everyone's expectations, but the prequels are still good in their own right. If you look at them as separate from the original films. Like I said before, people don't really criticize the original trilogy because it's the original trilogy. They treat it like it's gold, 
when it's far from perfection. Far. I could, I could make a list of everything wrong with the freaking original trilogy. I'm not saying the prequels are like a walk in the park, but at least there's a story there, unlike the quote unquote sequels. Not sequels. The original trilogy had a story, the prequels had a story. But like, by the end of Return of the Jedi, we get Luke's morals established by him saying, I'll never turn to the dark side, you failed. And then, skip 30 years later, and this guy is trying to kill his nephew. And I just had a conversation with someone the other day, I'm like, Luke would never do that in a million years. He risked almost everything to save his father. He said he would never turn to the dark side. Trying to kill his nephew is kind of turning. The old Jedi are perfect. Yeah, Star Wars isn't, isn't based on real life. It's not why we watch film. We watch film to escape reality. I mean, it can represent stuff, but that's not why people watch film. I just hope the Superman series isn't just a remake of Lois and Clark, because that would be kind of dumb. At least Lois and Clark was kind of original at the time. Same with Smallville. Well, Smallville took a little bit from Lois and Clark, but it made it its own thing. At least we're going to get Superman with a costume this time, so that's good news, in my opinion. And uh, other news, I just found an article that said Rob Pattinson the guy's gonna be playing the new Batman. He said he's gonna be reading a lot of comics. Like, dude, you gotta do a lot. You wanna read comics. You guys need to be buffed. You need to be watching the animated series. You need to watch all the damn films that have come out before you so you can get bits and pieces of other guys' performance, especially Keaton and uh, Kristen Bale. And maybe a little bit of Ben Affleck. At least with the fight choreography. Hopefully, the script is good. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath on that particular angle. But the Batman, eh, I'm looking forward to it as a fan of comics. But I wouldn't really hold my breath on it being great. <laughs>